Deputy Chief of the Main Directorate of Doctrines and Training of the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Colonel Yevgeny Mezevikin, said that the Russian and Ukrainian armies have significant differences. The defender himself is a career tanker, hero of Ukraine, people's hero, full cavalier of the Order of Bodan Kamelnitsky, commander of the tactical group Adam, and has been fighting since 2014. There is no autocracy dictatorship like theirs. People have free access to information, can express their opinion, protest in any form, even in the army. We are active in social networks. This is not always good. This opinion will not always be constructive, useful. Our enemies can use it, but the servicemen will not get anything special for this. When they use the forces and means that are in a military unit or in a group of troops in a complex, we see that they launch equipment, launch their disposable rashists from it. Someone will get there. Someone will walk. We do not have this, he told Radio Charter. The military man added that Ukraine cannot morally afford such an approach. Moreover, even if some commander had such an idea, he would not be able to do it because society would not forgive him. The Russians know that they will raise the salary of the soldier, give him a bonus, set the term of service, but they will not say that almost everyone who comes here dies. They are constantly recruiting people not to increase the army, but to plug the holes because they die like cockroaches. After treatment, the Russian soldier thinks that in a year he will come home as a hero with a medal, earn a ton of money and everything will be okay. Only a few know what will really happen. Maybe neighbors and relatives quietly said, but they have no access to the media. And in order to get some money, they will remain silent, even if they have to wait, Mezevikin concluded. As military political observer Alexander Kovalenko pointed out, in October, the Russian army set an absolute record for personnel losses, 41,980. Overall, as Kovalenko noted, the losses of Russian personnel this year are the highest and by the end of December will exceed the total losses of the occupiers in 2022 and 2023. He recalled that the occupiers' losses in 2022 amounted to 92,920 personnel. In 2023, already 253,290 people, and in the incomplete 2024, already 336,400. Russian depots with tanks and infantry fighting vehicles should run out in 2027, with artillery in 2026, with multiple launch rocket systems in 2025, and mortar stocks are almost empty. This is the conclusion reached by journalists from Ekonomisheskaya Pravda after analyzing OSINT data and satellite photos and using the linear interpolation method. In addition, according to Pavel Luzin, an expert on Russian military potential at the Washington-based Center for European Policy Analysis, at the current rate of depletion, Russian tanks and infantry vehicles will reach a critical point of depletion before the second half of 2026. Despite numerous statements that Russia has switched to a war footing and spends about 8% of its GDP on defense, the Kremlin can compensate for the loss of tanks, armored vehicles and artillery only by removing from storage and restoring equipment manufactured in Soviet times. However, these reserves do not seem inexhaustible. The publication says, it is also emphasized that not all equipment in Russian warehouses is suitable even for cannibalism, for dismantling, for spare parts, to make new weapons. For example, out of 3.4 thousand tanks, only 614 are in satisfactory condition. 1.7 thousand are in poor condition. 1.1 thousand are in terrible condition, analysts believe. The article notes, as for new production of weapons in the Russian Federation, according to The Economist, 175 modern T-90M tanks have been sent to the front since February the 24th, 2022, and the International Institute for Strategic Studies estimates their production in 2024 at up to 90 units. Since the number of the latter is decreasing, the production of the newly created T-90 in 2024 may amount to no more than 28 units. Pavlo Luzin, an expert on Russian military potential at the Washington-based Center for European Policy Analysis, believes that Russia can realistically produce only 30 tanks per year. 
In 2023, when the Ukrainians captured an allegedly new Russian T-90M tank, they discovered that its gun was manufactured in 1992. The Russians also cannibalized the barrels of the old towed artillery and mounted them on self-propelled howitzers. Analyst Richard Verica believes that by the beginning of 2024, five to six thousand such barrels have been removed. How long the Russians can continue to do this depends on the condition of the remaining 6,000 units. Michael Gerstad says that with rocket-propelled volley systems like the TOS-1A Salt Sepek barrel depletion means much shorter volleys. Luzin believes that at the current rate of elimination, stocks of Russian tanks and infantry vehicles will reach a critical point of depletion by the second half of 2026. This is evidenced by data from the analysis of satellite images of storage bases. From that time, both sides will probably reach conditional parity in this regard and will rely primarily on the achievements of the last few years, drones and other innovative systems.